Hey everybody, welcome back to Clive Barker's The Undying. I am the Blues32, and when last we left off, we had just gotten back from killing Elizabeth and burning her head. And we are back in the mansion. Right then. Hopefully anything I left behind Won't is still budge. here. And the items have not basically reset. <laughs> what the hell? That was different than what I had anticipated. And again, I'm not entirely sure what I did anticipate. Oh, that looks like a mana well. An amplifier. Oh no! Whew. That's with the giggling children. Don't remember them being there before. know if I'm going the right way or if I'm actually exploring. Because I'm not trying to go the right way. I'm looking for goodies. Locked. I want prizes. Jammed. I want to be rewarded for my diligent, diligent searching. And I aims to be, um, rewarded for my diligent serving. Sir, sir, sir. <laughs> Ouch. That didn't actually hurt. That one did. That plate got buried in pretty good. <laughs> Ow. Okay, well, we're getting a lot of health packs back. I had used up a, quite a few of them. Won't budge. Huh? I've seen strange men prowling in the grounds. I don't know where they're coming from. Prowling the groans, you say? 
Well, we can't have that. Ooh, I hear an amplifier. Where are you, my little present? somebody else's groans. You prick! It's not jammed, it's reloading. difference and there's little hope for you. There you are. I knew I heard you. Look at the moves on you, Slick. Just stuff. Okay, good. He's still alive. It really doesn't matter whether or not they live. But, you know, I'm trying to be like the hero type here. And if I'm going to do that... as well play the part in entirely. You know? Stuck. Alright. Where's Jeremy? Hey oh, yeah, there, handsome. Stuck. Oh, <laughs> 
Won't budge. Won't budge. You scared me. Sorry. I didn't think I'd run into anyone at this hour. Likewise. So tell me, what do you know of Ambrose? Ambrose is the family secret they like to keep quiet. Yes. Hmm? What do you mean? Well, no one has ever directly told me, but everyone on staff knows that Ambrose killed his father. It's one of those family secrets they don't like to talk about. He killed Joseph? Yes. Seven years ago, in the game room, even the authorities in town knew about the killing, but were slow to act upon it, since Ambrose was such a hellion. Throughout the county, Ambrose was known for his viciousness. Only a fool chose to stand in his way. Hmm. You people move around in the strangest way. So let's go this way. I was watching one of my Stop. old videos of this. Lock. Might have been like the first or the second one. And I can hear the amplifiers as I go by them. And I'm kicking myself for not knowing about it. You idiot! I take it they never caught him. He emerged after months of hiding to claim his inheritance. Wobble, wobble, wobble. He barged into the manor and proceeded to take whatever he wanted. By the time the constables could arrive, Ambrose had fled the scene. They gave chase, but he escaped their pursuit by leaping off a cliff. A cliff? Never hesitated for a moment. Everyone thought him to be dead. Except... Except what? We'd hear stories of Ambrose sightings for years. In the States, the Orient, even in Prussia. We really didn't believe he was still alive. Until he came back and brought those heathens with him. The prodigal son returns. In so many words. You're going to die. I do hope I've helped you. You have indeed. Thanks. Just let me go back to first person view. What I heard makes more sense now. A man I heard Ambrose attack was his own father. He actually murdered his own blood. The butler filled me in on a piece of the morbid covenant history. The family, townspeople, and local authorities were afraid of Ambrose even after he had disappeared. When he finally returned to the estate, the constables gave chase and Ambrose was able to evade them by leaping from the cliffs to the ocean far below. Their fear of him when alive was nothing compared to the sightings of him following his deadly leap. Back from the dead, it seems the black sheep has returned. Cl close your mouth, Patrick. Hmm. I don't know art, but I know what I like, and... Yeah. It's not that. Won't budge. It won't budge. Oh, thank you. It's about ready to flip my lid. I was sure I had thrown a couple. And there he goes with the weird little hand motions. Doing absolutely nothing. I've heard of people pretending to be busy, but usually they actually start messing with things when they do. I don't know, pretend to dust or something. I'll just 
just wave your hands about. May 11th, 1914. My father gave me this die for my 18th birthday, just as he did for my older siblings. He thinks by forcing us into the same pathetic ritual he undertook as a young man, we will magically turn into responsible adults. June 15th, 1914. Father is forcing me to use my journal. He watches now across the library as I write. Self-reflection is the key to enlightenment, he says. Rotten tripe. Soon I take leave to travel Europe and the Middle East. Four, April 14th, 1922. I have found my true brothers, the Tersanti. They are a barbaric race traveling the desert in search of battle. They neither fight for independence nor to subjugate. They fight because they hate. They have taught me how to use primitive but powerful weaponry. I return home soon, bringing my knowledge and some souvenirs with me. May 3rd, 1922. I need to know what Father has been researching all these years. The old man has been negligent of everything else. I must know why this is so. I will sneak onto the island of Standing Stones to discover his secret. I will need to be careful. The groundskeepers are loyal and will snitch on me if they have half the chance. May 4th, 1922. I am sure I was spotted by one of Father's servants last night. I saw his lantern as I pulled the skiff from the dock. The island was a fool's errand. Old rocks and some barbaric chiseling were all. It would... Were all. It would have been worthless if not for a twist of fortune. Not wanting to be seen, I risked the reefs and moored up the coast. There, amongst the cliff, I discovered a mysterious cove. I am certain it is the hideout of my ancestors my ancestors used so long ago. I am excited to return and explore these caves. This secret will no doubt prove valuable to me. June 21st, 1922. Today in the billiard room, Father confronted me about my late night excursions. I did not realize that a stick could do such damage. I watched as his blood stained the floor and he begged for mercy. I told the servants that Father's heart gave out and he hit his head while falling. His, my family is shocked. The funeral is tomorrow. Father always said, self-reflection is the key to enlightenment. Allow me to reflect on this day. How could I have saved my father from a slow, painful death? I could have hit him harder. June 23, 1922. The constable is looking for me. He is suspicious. This may be my last entry in this journal, for I will not be caught alive. Since father's death, all fear has left me. Although the life I know is coming to an end, I feel as if I am be about to begin anew. You must have a death wish. Whoa! Some things never change. One by one, my kin are dying. This pathetic excuse for a world is coming to an end. I write now only to pass the time, waiting for the authorities to cease their search for my body. Looking back, I smiled at the voices in my head that always said to keep the Pirate's Cove a secret. Had I shared my hideout with my siblings, the police would have shackled me up a long ago. Instead, I am the hot-tempered black sheep covenant who leapt to his death to avoid capture. Only my childhood companion Connor knew of this lair, and he sadly didn't share my vision of things to come. Funny, even if I thought watching the life pour from a friend would trigger some remorse or, or compassion. In me. Funny, even I thought watching the life pour from a friend would trigger some remorse or compassion in me. But such is not the case. This place is more of a home to me than my father's manor ever was. Long before I took this cove as my own, generations of thieves and smugglers found sanctuary here. Feeling their presence and guiding whispers drive me to read, to unite with the Tosanti. Even the weakest sheep serves a purpose. Oh, the day comes close. Ambrose Covenant. Alright, Ambrose. Did you off the servant? You didn't off the servant. Surprising. Yeah, 
I'll go downstairs first. No, 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 no. What the hell? No. No, you keep away. What the hell was that? That was freaky. knowing which way is progress and which way is, is searching for stuff. Such an irritant. Won't budge. Okay. I just had something. For your boots, Irishman. You killed me for my boots? Well, they probably were nice boots. I didn't really get a good look. Okay, that way down there felt like progress, so what's over here? Stuck. Will anyone attempt to kill me for my boots? What? Okay. Whoa! Okay. Hey there, Drac. Jammed. Another game with un unexpected uh, connections to Dracula, huh? Jammed. Jammed. Looking back, though, I probably should have should have realized D was about Dracula. to deal with those again. express how much I hate them. No real reason in particular, mind you. A little present. Those fine Tisanti gentlemen. I just had something. Did you? Surprise! 
happy birthday to you. I got him. And the sun is in my eyes again. I am all sorts of happy about this. I may have to cut this recording early just to... Yeah. I will power through it. Even as I go blind... have a death wish. Yeah, I'm gonna have to cut this one short. I cannot see a damn thing. Really need to get around to making that, uh... Well, not making, rather, uh, getting... Um, what's it? Curtains. Yes. Anyway, I'm the Blues 32. This is Clive Barker's The Undying. <coughs> TTFN. Ta-ta for now.